All right, welcome back to another Koenji Sean Reviews, the manga show, and this is episode eight. Well, episode eight in this format. There's probably 40 or 50 vids up here on the YouTube page, and my Patreon, Koenji Sean Reviews, has another 45 vids up there, so we're not really on eight, but in this format, I guess it is eight. And uh, to be honest, I already shot this video. I didn't like it, decided to cancel everything, spent a couple more days putting stuff together, and I am back. So let's take a look at some of the manga art books and manga I've picked up over the last couple of weeks since the last video. I've been meaning to get this for a long time, Search, Search and Destroy, of the same title as the manga series, Atsushi Kaneko Works from 1992 to 2018. Um, I got another Atsushi Kaneko art book as well this week. These are both ones that I've been wanting to get for a while. This one is signed. Atsushi Kaneko. And these aren't impossible to get. I got mine directly through Vanilla Gallery because Vanilla Gallery is located in Ginza, not far from my office. So I have pretty good access to them. I'm not too sure if you can get them online from other countries overseas. Um, I just picked up this one for myself. And then I'll see how much I like it after I read it. But the one cool thing for all y'all is it's not just Japanese, but English as well. So that's cool. And one of my favorite characters ever, Deathco. So rad. So rad. This is from his first release in 1993 or 1992 called Rock and Roll. It's the only thing of his that I do not have. I have everything else as far as manga goes. And now I'm pretty damn close to having all the art books. My favorite Deathco image. No, this isn't from Deathco. Sorry, this is from Tattoo Girls. Tattoo Girls. Also rad but Deathco I mean he incorporates that same front pro that front view very symmetrical of course whenever we see a pink gun it must be Bambi in her pink gun the opening of Bambi in her pink gun issue um, volume one the fuck am I saying today man what am I saying a lot of these Gengas are really cool. So when he was doing Bambi, this is before he went full digital. If you watch the Archipel video on Atsushi Kaneko, he talks about his transition from doing hand paneling into digital. So it's pretty cool to see the Genga or the original panels of those. Man, Bambi. I gotta be honest, I got a shitload of stuff to show you today. I'm gonna have to break it up into parts so I can take water and bathroom breaks or something. I really like Bambi. Bambi was uh, released in English in the States in the 90s. Or maybe it might have been closer to 2000. It came out here around 97. It might not have actually gotten translated into English until 2001, something like that. But I remember really enjoying it. Um, one of my tattoo artist friends had a couple volumes that I had taken a look at. And then when I got over here, shortly after that, I started buying Atsushi Kaneko stuff. Of course, famous for Bambi. Most recent is Evol, which we'll talk about here soon. My f second favorite next to Evol is Deathco. Search and Destroy, the remake of the Dororo. Tezuka Osamu story is really rad too. Fly Girl, Mouse Girl, Roach Girl. I like that he's got English here for people that want non-Japanese speakers. Soil's a great series as well. It was actually made into a live action, a live action. I mean, it's very, the story's confusing and surreal but it was made into a live action um tv drama or made for tv movie i think tv drama I, I don't remember exactly which i've never been able to track down streaming anywhere or online 
the giant pile of salt that mystically or magically or appears in the schoolyard after the family goes missing as the catalyst for the soil story. Of course, I've read everything except rock and roll that Atsushi Kaneko has ever done. And I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here because we don't need to look at every single page in detail. More salt. Although I'd like to. I only did like a quick flip through of this last night, just prepping for this video. You know, the other problem, if I go straight through with all these books, this room is going to be cooking hot. It's been so damn hot in Tokyo. Even today's clouding, it's still hot as hot and humid as hell. More soil. Here's Wet Moon, which is also, it's only three volumes, so it's pretty quick to go through. I actually saw it scanlated online in English, so you can find it online. Um, but nothing like having the physical man. By the way, this and the next Atsushi Kaneko art books are my personal books, but if you're interested in them, I think I can track down more. I can't promise I can track down this signed, but I could try. And uh, yeah, just shoot me a, a comment below or hit me up. Japanbookhunter.com is the website. Reviews at gmail is the email. Well, the email for here. Wet Moon. And my favorite, Death Co. Well, was my favorite until Evol came out because Evol's so sick. I just read, uh, as a lot of you know, I just read Volume 4 and it's getting better and better. Child Supervillains. The Queen Bees. The. What was their name? They're so cool. The Cheerleader Assassins. Oh, Death Co. makes me so sad. Till she starts killing. Kill Madam M. So rad. He's so good with this uh, use of negative space. Everything's like flipped. Flipped not as in left to right flipped, but as in color flipped. Heavy dark backgrounds with white lines for detail. Watching him on that archipelago is just awesome. You really should check it out. Watching him like uh, do Death Coast hair is so rad. And that is Search and Destroy, signed by Atsushi Kaneko himself. Then I got this one too. I've been meaning to get this for a while as well since it came out. This is Loco 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 Tribute exhibition Atsushi Kaneko. These are the three main characters of Evol. Evol, E-V-O-L. Signed as well. Signed as well, my friends. Man, I thought only one of them was signed, but when I opened that one, I realized, oh shit, they're both signed. Rad. So this has some of the evil manga in it. So cool. It's a classic scene. Evil is just a misspelling of evil. Evil? What am I saying? Let's see. And then we have art panels art panels, art pieces, illustrations. So cool. The gang. Sick. Some Bambi. Some soil. Wet moon. 
See, I'm a psycho, so I need both of these books, but I guess, you know, you can get away with Search and Destroy. It's bigger, a slightly larger format, and thicker. Um, I like it a little, looking at these again, I like it a little bit more. We can see here that he had done some hand-drawing stuff of Death Co., even at that stage, but almost everything is, it seemed like, from the Archipelago interview, was done on a tablet, on a, you know, tablet with a Wacom, Wacom, is it Wacom or Wacom? Wack off? Sick. And, oh, that's such a rad image. And this is Loco, Loco, Loco. Ooh, that's a good image from Hunky Punky back in the day. Early two aughts. Let's do a couple more here and then we'll take a short break. So I was able yesterday, yesterday I went with, I met a couple friends over at Nakano Broadway, went up to the fourth floor to the art book section and photography books and stuff and got the new Toshio Saeki. Um, this is uh, published by, who is the publisher? Oh, Collection Pierre. This is packed. Oh, it's Corne Cornelius. God, I'm so bad with like the European pubs just because I don't buy anything from Europe. But uh, this, luckily for me, not only is it thick and packed with art, but uh, it's got French, Japanese, and English introductions. So I can choose one that's not French, which helps because... To be honest, I don't speak French for shit. I think I did like one of those apps, you know, like a Duolingo app for about four or five months just to get some pronunciation down. Mm, my brain's packed full of other information, making it hard for me to remember anything outside of Japanese, manga, and friends, family, and customer names. It's hard to keep track of everyone, man. Dunbar's number, dude. I just don't have enough capacity. God, I love Toshio Saiki. Friend from Japanese avant-garde books was just over at BBB yesterday in Shimokitazawa while visiting Tokyo, and I asked if the there's a Saiki BBB collaboration signed poster last time I was in there a few weeks ago but I had too many books to carry at home and he said he did not see it when he was in there yesterday but I'm still going to go over next week and see if it's still there because I really want something after I sold my scroll of pathos signed by Saiki Toshio I Decided I wanted to get something signed by him again, so I'm going to go over and buy that poster for myself. So sick. We're not going to go through all of this. Released in Europe, available in North America as well. Um, released in France and available here in limited numbers, but this is very cool. My Mangatero collection is nearly complete, my friends. Nearly complete. I have every Tonko Bone. I'm missing one children's book, the children's book about a, a mitten or a glove, but I have the Momotaro children's book. I, what is that? The Big Turnip, Okinakabu. I have, I just need one more children's book and I got this. This is from the most recent exhibition, the 30 year anniversary or memorial as it was translated. These are a lot of the pieces from the show. I have a ton of these postcards. I got a bunch of stuff when I was over at that event. Ouch! <laughs> of course, Baba is in a lot of them. As well as The Little Prince. So I believe this is one of the most famous images from the show. The Little Prince and Baba. I love this one too. Kapow. Um, but these are not all, it's not all, because I think the event only had 30 some pieces. This is from 
Le Petit Prince. Whoa, Baba, getting wild there, getting wild. Um, God, it's so wild. Let's see what else is in here. This is from, I believe this one was the bizarre world of Mangataro. God, I've got so much of his stuff, it's really hard to remember. Anyways, you guys don't need to see all of the, the filth, the Mangataro filth that I have. Because I've done two videos on it in the past. If you want to know more about Mangataro, go back and watch my videos. I did uh, top 10, top 20. I think I did a top 10 and then everything else. So cool. Yay! Not One Piece! One more. So I got a couple of copies of this, one for sale and one for myself. This is Shonen Gaho Taizen, or the illustra Illustrated Encyclopedia of Shonen Manga. Um, this covers 1947 to 1971, about the time of, that Gekiga really emerged. So up to that point, you know, a lot of the manga was Shonen Manga. This is such a cool book. Great reference material, lots of covers, originally released in 2008, but I still see them out in the wild, like at new bookstores, like available for new. So who knows, you might be able to find one online. Um, if not, hit me up, japanbookhunter.com, I got an extra copy, and you'll see there's a little bonus furoku, or mini manga in the back. So you kind of feel like you're getting two for the price of one. Got all these rad covers. Of course, the shonen manga ha did a lot of sports stuff, a lot of space, uh, adventure stuff. Um, this also covers some of the horror stuff. There's some Hino Hideshi in here. There's some uh, Ogon Bato, Golden Bat. Some Kaiju stuff. God, it's just got like a little bit of everything in it. I mean, I was flipping through it the other night while I was watching TV and I'm like, God, I need to just read this because there's just so much to go over. There we go. Some golden bat. Some umez. Of course, cat-eyed boy. I believe around here. No. Oh. Some timelines, that's cool for those of you that are really into C71. We're back, back here and it should go to 47. 1947. Sorry, it's a bit small. And then after the index here, we have the Furoku that comes out. This like little mini manga would come with the monthly manga magazine. And that is Shonen Gaho Taizen. So if you're interested in that, hit me up or, you know, go out and look for it yourself if you want. But let's take a short break and I'll be back with a bunch of manga. Do you like rare, weird, and wild manga, books, and magazines that you can't see on traditional SNS? Then head over to my Patreon, Koenji Sean Reviews. This is why I post the weirdest stuff from my huge collection. For as little as a dollar a month, you get an exclusive video weekly, and you get the whole catalog of over 40 videos as of now. I also have an online bookstore now, japanbookhunter.com. This is where you can go to buy said books. So head on over there. I'll be posting more and more in the coming weeks. Thanks. All right, I am back, and let's look at some more manga and other wild stuff. So one awesome thing about making these videos, doing the Patreon, selling the books at japanbookhunter.com, is that people send me stuff that they make or stuff that they're into. I got some, I told you guys before, I remember Epic Comics uh, sent me some stuff from North America, 
which was really rad. Some stuff in English that I can't really get very easily over here. Um, Bart Wolf, thank you very much for the zine. Kind of comic zine. Has a bunch of these rad profiles of psychos. Really great illustrations. And this series, kind of zine comics, um, about a dude with a super big dick. So uh, I'm not going to go through that one here. I mean, I love it. It's so fun and rad. But uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'll do something on the Patreon. Koenji Sean Reviews Patreon page for that, where I can post all the wild shit from my collection. And then some wild stickers, obviously. Pika Pika! Krang! Looks like he's having a pretty good Monday. And then the homie Bad Teeth Comics follow also. Bad Teeth Comics. Wait, first before I go to Bad Teeth. How do I do this? Zigoto Apocalypto. Follow on Instagram. That's Bart Wolf, this stuff over here. And then uh, Bad Teeth Comics, Glenn Manders, sent me his zines. Great illustrations. Some cool stuff. Really fun. This one, I, I out of the three that you sent me, homie, I like this one the most. It was pretty rad. This one is a tie-up with uh, Shane, Shane Armstrong, I believe. Kind of a mo like a, a comic book. Horaman. And this one is kind of a packed with nostalgia from, well, from anime, from manga, from the internet, toys. I know that over there at Bad Teeth, they'd be liking those soft vinyl toys. So thank you. I saw this one and this one available on the Bad Teeth Comics website. So go over there and pick one of those up and follow them. Of course, Bad Teeth Comics on Instagram. Thanks guys. I appreciate getting stuff in the mail. And if you send me something that's rad, I will always put it in a video and post it on Instagram for you. All right, let's get into some of my manga. Some of the manga that I picked up over the last couple weeks since my last video was out. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? Um, I really was wanting to pick up some, some Kawasaki Mikiko. And I think I do have one thing by Kawasaki. But uh, I'd, you know, like seen these online. Pretty wild stuff. Actually, I tracked them down online. They get really expensive. I got this set actually pretty cheap. I think around 1,500 yen in pretty solid condition. Look at those bats. Isn't that cool the way they did that? And uh, these look wild. These look fun. So I'm looking forward to diving into that series. Keeping it erotic. I was finally able to track down the... Ero Manga Maniacs, er, er, Ero Manga Maniacs, right? So I have the horror one of these. I have the other one. There's three of them. The Gekiga one, this one I found at Mandrake of all places. Um, fairly cheap, but it covers just a ton of mangaka that do wild and erotic stuff. Not all their stuff is wild and erotic, but for example, Hayami June, of course, completely wild and erotic. Uh, Kamimura. Depends on the title. Um, Miyanishi Keizo. Eroguro stuff. Fukushima Masami. He did, uh, of course, Saint Muscle. So not all of his stuff. Uh, Ishihara Gojin. A lot of these people I have up on my bookstore or up on my shelf right here. But uh, I also got it So for the reference to some of the people that I don't have. Kasuma Shiro. Here, let me look over here for a second. I'd read 
this lady getting hit on. There's some wild stuff in here, man. So I can't really flip through everything, but I read a couple of them out of here. There's some really wild stuff in here, though. But Kamimura, Le Fluid du Mal, an excerpt from that. And uh, Kasamashiro, a little bit, I think this is closer towards the late 70s when he was doing like really kind of playboy, penthouse comic style stuff. Um, some other people you wouldn't expect to be as wild as they are. So, for example, Abe Shinichi did this one, which is pretty sexy and wild. I mean, you can tell by the cover, right? And then I also bought this, I wanted this for a long time for this section right here, which I'm trying to flip forward to. George Akiyama, some Nagisa Pro stuff, but we have these profiles of a lot of other mangaka. So this is a great way to find new mangaka that I might not be familiar with. Of course, Ishii Takeshi, I know, or uh, Kuroda Minoru, but this will help me dig up a whole bunch of wild stuff, my friends. Great reference material. Keeping it wild. I got this yesterday. So good. It's just so good. Kitahara Koji, I believe is his name. I even got some postcards of his because I was so stoked on the art. I've been meaning to buy this for a while, but it's pretty expensive. 4,000 yen new. Check out these postcards. So it's what it is. It's Reiwa Kaiki Gaho illustrations of basically yokai and monsters from our era now. We're in the Reiwa era before it was, you know, it was the Showa era, then the Heisei era, and now we're in the Reiwa era. And basically, it's a lot of, like, the long-armed old lady. This is a classic yokai. Um, but just new drawings of them, different takes on them in a more modern setting. Well, somewhat modern, because look at that old-ass TV. Kind of everything's looking a bit 70s. Look at the eyeball hands. Aka, Akaname. I got it. If you don't clean the bathroom well, this dude comes out. Because the tubs around the bottom of the tub will get moldy and it's spawned from the mold. Yeah, rad, right? That's the postcards. And then, God, it's just Kitahara Koji, so rad. Here, let me show you a picture of him. And this was from, I think, February of this year. No, May of, oh, May 2020. Well, why was I thinking February? Anyways, let me show you a picture of the man himself. Looking very cool. Kind of talks a bit about the shit he's into. Hardcover. This is good quality. And every illustration is rad. I mean, every illustration is phenomenal. Maybe we'll skip the one with too much titty. Kainade. Of course, at a very aggressive kappa, trying to get those Oshiridama out the old bunghole. Kama Itati. One of my favorites. Someone asked me the other day who my, what my favorite yokai is, and I said the kamikiri. Um, Mizuki Shigeru always shows the kamikiri as just being a black blob of a figure, but not Kitahara. If you look really closely, I don't know if that's a dong or a knee down there. So the artwork is just phenomenal, right? This is the eyeball dude again.
sick. Hashaku sama. Should we keep going? Let's keep going a little bit. My quest for Kobori Yo and Kano Seisaku is never ending, so I finally got the cops. The cops, or Zakopu, all seven volumes of this. I actually found two sets, one for a friend and one for myself, um, which I sold, so sorry, none for sale. And uh, I'd actually ordered this last December and it got lost in the mail. The only time in Japan I've had something lost in the mail. I think somebody stole it off my porch, to be honest. But this, I got all seven volumes of this. Then I got Yasha. Ah, this is the Kawasaki uh, Mikiko that I'd, that I'd gotten as well. Kawasaki Mikiko was the one before the, the, here, let me cover those titties. Should I cover these ones too? Do, do, do. Yeah, this same, same artist, right? So I was pretty stoked on being able to track these down and track these down. I mean, some of the stuff gets really expensive. So at any rate, yeah, I got that three volume. That's the complete three volume set. I'm looking forward to digging into that. I will let you know how it goes. And that's probably something that I'll put up on Patreon, Koenji Sean Reviews. All right, I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that I have for sale. I'm not going to open them. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but um, Japanese Spider-Man, all eight volumes. Some of these, a couple of these, like number one is a little bit faded. So I'll probably take my, because I have my own personal set, of course. I'll probably take my one out and put it with this so that whoever gets it gets nice crisp copies. I like everyone to get crisp copies of everything. I had planned at one point to do a Japanese Spider-Man versus Japanese Spider-Man released in America because the Japanese release and the Japanese Spider-Man released in America are quite different in parts. Heavily edited in America, but it's just too complicated. I don't got time for that shit. So instead, I will give one of my nice copies away. Um, this is volume number one of the Weird Tales of Shigeru Mizuki. I already had volume two. I wanted to have both volumes together to put together into a set. Hardcover, beautiful. That is not for sale, so I'm not even going to show you. Uh, some Gona Guy stuff. So today I posted Cutie Honey. This is the original A5 size. Tonko Bone, well, slightly bigger size Tonko Bone from 1992. And I was also able to track down these rare and hard to find uh, Cutie Honey. Wait, where's the other one at? There's two. Cutie Honey postcards. Anyways, there's two of these postcards. This one in a different style as well. Probably on the ground in a pile somewhere. But these are from 1996, released by Tokyo Hands of all places through Dynamic Productions. And then Cutie Honey, check out the, I'll show you the opening color splash. That's cool, but no, this right here. Rad. And this is pretty crisp considering how old it is. And of course it's wild. That might be up on the website as of the time this video comes out, but who knows? Some stuff goes very quickly. Other stuff sits around a bit longer. Um, Shuten Doji. All three volumes of this I picked up. This was from 1977. God, why do I have to look this up again? 77. There we go. This is the story of a child born in the demon world brought to... The human world given to a family. Sorry, let me fast forward. Demon battle. Fast forward. Fuh. Look at that demon's head. Bam! And then the demon gives the child to the family to raise for 15 years. And then we have three volumes 
of awesomeness as that ch child grows up. Goes to school, all of that. Devilman Lady, a friend was missing some volumes, so I got a complete set. Then I found a friend, my same friend, had two volumes of 12. I happened to run across a set that was complete but missing 12 only. So now I've put everything together. I've got my own personal full set, a full set for sale, and then a bunch of odd, about eight more like odd mixed volumes. So Devilman Lady is just epic. It really is epic. And uh, I'm putting together, I just finished reading Yuichi Yokoyama's New Engineering. I have a bunch of Yokoyama and I decided I'm going to put together like a little set of maybe four or five books and sell them together in a set. Uh, New Engineering was really fun. I just finished reading it this morning. Um, I've read a lot of the others and you know, a lot of the Yokoyama stuff's getting harder and harder to find, but I do run across it now and then. So I figured I would spread the love since we have the release of Plaza coming out soon. So I'm not going to put Plaza in that set because you, you're going to be able to get that in English. A couple more things and we'll wrap up. Ooh, here's some Maeda Toshio. Tentacle, Prawn, and Demon Fighting. Urotsukurogi. I, I can never remember the name of that other title. You know, they made the anime out of lots of uh, demon fighting and also slimy tentacles. But we won't get into this. This is a great set here. I've got a personal set of my own. I was going to sell the one that's better looking, but both of them are crispy. I have five volumes of eroticas. Erotics? Eroticas? Manga erotics. Um, I went through all of them. Very erotic. There's some wild stuff in here. Wild stuff. So I got volumes one through four and a special fall 2000 edition. Edition issue. I should say. And uh, I'm going to put those all together into one set. I think I'm going to probably sell one through four together and then uh, do keep 2000 for myself or because it's a bit heavy to send five, you know, four of them are more manageable to send. So I'm not going to show you the inside. Maybe I'll do something on Patreon. More Yoshitaka Amano. If you're into Yoshitaka Amano, go to my website. I have this will be the second book that I have up there. Um, yeah, I do dig Amino's work. Some real beautiful artwork in this. I should be posting this up to the website in the next couple days. It's been, the thing is, it's like, I have about, I don't know, including magazines. I don't know, 400 things to post. Books alone, eh, maybe 150. So how much time I have? I have time to post maybe two or three a day. Sometimes four. <laughs> it's like it's a never-ending battle, homies. But this Amano book is great. It depends on what you... I mean, the other one that I have up is in a larger format. Paperback. This is smaller format. Hardcover. The other one's got a lot of his like really vibrant color work in it. This has a lot of the raw hand-drawn stuff, hand-painted stuff. So it really depends on what your flavor of Amano is. But uh, yeah, there's that. Not going to open this, but I just sold... It's in a... I already wrapped it up. I found it a copy of Ryu, Strongest Man on the Face of the Planet. Of course, Kaze Shinobu, and it sold instantly. And at the same time, I found a copy of The Boy Who Has Government 45. So this is going to be up on the site. And finally, I got a couple books by Yoshifumi Hayashi, who does like really abstract, weird, erotic stuff. Let me see if I can find some stuff that's suitable for our purposes here. Wild. I mean, not as blatant as and more abstract than Harukawa Namio. Speaking of Harukawa Namio, September, Vanilla Art Gallery, new exhibition. I'm expecting a new book. Should be fun. But uh, 
Yeah, if you're into weird art, abstract, sexy, thick legs and drippy stuff, then Yoshifumi is wild. Trying to find something that is suitable for YouTube. And getting very hard to find. At any rate, my friends, that was some of the stuff I picked up over the last couple weeks. So keep checking back. I have, you know, I'm always pumping out some videos, doing some stuff here and there. Thanks again to my friends who sent me stuff. I appreciate it. And let's move on. Also this week, I stopped by Gallery of Hakaba at Nakano Broadway to check out the Ultraman exhibition going on. Uh, these aren't rare. I feel like they hold an Ultraman exhibition here about once a year to peddle merch. There's lots of Ultraman merch to sell, right? I'm not really a Sofbi or Japanese soft vinyl collector, but they did have some pretty cool Sofbi figures here. Um, but that's really not my business. I came to look for books and book-related stuff, but everything was new. There wasn't anything that I can't get online or at a bookstore, uh, you know, down the road. So I actually didn't buy anything while I was here, but I thought I'd take a, some videos while I was here to show you what they have over at Gallery of Hakaba right now. I think this event's going on. So right now it's July 8th for me, Friday. I think this event's going on for another couple weeks. So if you see something you're interested in, just hit me up in the comments or hit me up at coinchishanreviews at gmail.com or go over to japanbookhunter.com japanbookhunter on Instagram all that stuff you guys know where to find me this corner was the best because they have all these uh, photos from various Ultraman movies and episodes of Kaiju Battles but unfortunately none of these are for sale these are display only which is too bad because I wouldn't mind having one of these up on my wall Eh, the kids would think it's pretty funny. Look at this pig dude. What's that pig dude doing? Anyways, yeah, to be honest, you know, I don't know a hell of a lot about Ultraman, Ultraman 7, all the kaiju names, but man, people really love those books, especially from the late 60s through the 80s, all of the retro ones with a lot of the weird kaiju. And uh, I'm gonna have to go through, I still have a couple kaiju, Zukan, uh, encyclopedias around that haven't sold yet. I need to start going through and studying up. These were pretty rad. These are all metal badges or chokin metal. Um, the Go Nagai ones right here are really rad. The Devil Man. Uh, those all go for, I think they're around $15 or something like that. Uh, there's a Sulf B, but again, like I said, I don't really collect Sulf B, but I can actually finally ship them now because I'm shipping with DHL. So eh, let me know if there's something you're interested in. And that was the Ultraman event over at Gallery of Hakaba. Thanks everyone for being here. I love the support, whether it's on Discord or it's on Patreon or it's going to japanbookhunter.com where right now I do have some artwork up, not just books. I have this Tomie 2 uh, 20 out of 100 signed print by Junji Ito, released by Asahi Press, shipped direct from them. And I also have up some Akago Shintaro original piece, hand-painted, one of one, signed. And uh, yeah, it's not very cheap though, but it will make your eyes bleed looking at this son of a bitch. Um, I have some more stuff coming that I won in the auction. Devilman Cell, Kasuma Shiro, uh, Akira Poster, uh, Kago Shintaro original Genga. So check in with me if you're interested in any of that stuff. I'm going to be picking it up this week and I hope to show it in an upcoming video. So until then, thanks guys and matane.